All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, would you like to open us with prayer? Hello. Who? Hey, hey Pastor Daniel. Okay. Uh, would you like so, to open with prayer? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to your throne of grace this morning. We would like, Lord, to thank you for another day for the the blessings for your guidance for your provisions we pray oh god today as we have this uh, meeting in devotion lord we pray that uh you will be with us guide us and um help us to whatever we do today will magnify your name lord we ask for your forgiveness uh all the sins that we have done the things that are not worthy before you, Lord, please, please take it away from our hearts and and continue to use us, O oh God, for your honor and glory, for the furtherance of the gospel, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to be continuing in John chapter 9 this month. Uh, we got about down to, I think, verse 25. Uh last month but i wanted us to start again uh kind of back in in verse 13 and i'll go ahead and read about 10 verses and then just interrupt me if you if you have some uh insights you'd like to share okay so jesus has just healed this blind man uh, on the sabbath and in verse 13 we pick up the story and they brought to the Pharisees, him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. When again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he kept not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They said unto the blind men again, what says you of him? And he, he that has opened your eyes. And he said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man that had received sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say was blind, was born blind? And how does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and he was born blind but by what means he now sees we know not who or who that has opened his eyes we know not he is of age so just ask him he, he he shall speak for himself and these words were spoke because the parents were fearful of the jews for the jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was the Christ, that he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, he's, his parents said he was of age. You want to want to share their thoughts on this first little part? So obviously they brought in the blind man and they brought in his parents to try to disprove that he was ever blind. Alex, do you have any thoughts? You're, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, uh, in verse uh, 13 and 17, uh, we can see the, the opinion of the Pharisees and they are questioning the uh, the testimony or the being uh, 
uh, God be uh, Jesus being a, a God, and uh, they stick more on on the law, and uh, they they believe uh, Sabbath as a uh, a holy holy day. So uh, any person that uh, violates the the law will uh, uh, meet a penalty. So uh, he's questioning uh, the uh, about uh, Jesus, and uh, in the in the verses we read from uh, verses thirteen to seventeen. It seems that uh, the the Pharisees are divided in their uh, uh, opinion. Uh, opinion, yes, in their opinion, uh, uh, some believe that Jesus Christ is not uh, uh, is not uh, from God, and uh, some says that uh, how can this man, being a sinner, can do such a sign? So the Pharisees are divided in their opinion. Yeah. Did you have some additional thoughts, Daniel? Yeah. Um, um, I I I see here that there is always there are always people that will go against against the faith against Christ, against the believers, like this man who was born blind. Um, the Pharisees is acting uh, by their own uh, idea or opinion. They are not there to learn, but they are there to question about the Lord. They are not, um, they are not convinced that Jesus came from God or the very God, they are there to find fault, to find accusation against the Lord. Now in learning, in as, as our devotion, um, there are always people that will go against us, that, that will question our faith. What I like here, the testimony of, a, of, a, of, of this person who was healed, um, he has no enough knowledge about the Lord, but just one thing he knows. I was blind, but now I see. Um, for a new believers, maybe we cannot, you cannot give enough knowledge or testimony about the Lord, but one thing, before we were religious, God-fearing, but not saved, but now that you come to know the Lord as your personal Savior, one thing I know, I was lost, but now I, I, I'm saved. So there, there is no need for uh, a big education, but his experience with the Lord, that's what he is telling them, that he was blind then, but now by, but he was healed. So uh, for me, as a believer, uh, there is always an answer. Um, there are always people that will go against our faith. We cannot expect that people will agree. But one thing, one thing he know, this, this man born blind, but now he is, he is killed. He is, he, he, he can now see. Another thing that I would like to share, I, I, I see here that he was, um uh no it was i i guess um it last 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 time but i'd like just to um share this thought um that disciple asked jesus about who 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 seen that this man born blind and jesus told them that neither the man or the parents but but it happens to manifest the glory of God. So for us, I brought this topic last Thursday to my to our Bible study. Uh, so 
in our uh, nature, we try to find someone to be blamed of what's happened or, or what is lacking in our lives. Sometimes we even blame our parents why we were born poor, why, why we were born something like this. But, but I told even to our attendees, probably if you are a millionaire, you cannot come to attend Bible studies because you are a millionaire. So we thank the Lord that, that uh, we have the time, we have the, the opportunity to attend, to listen. So uh, whatever is lacking, God has a purpose. Whatever is missing, the Lord allow it to happen for a good purpose, to manifest the glory of God. So that's it. I think it's very long. I had had myself muted. Sorry. Uh, let me read the next 10 verses and then let's talk about it some more because I think the interaction of the blind man with the Pharisees is, is really remarkable. Elijah, you have something you want to say? I want to say something. Go ahead. In about this first chapter, uh, verses, these verses that we have read, I noticed the uh, we can note here so many things about uh, chapter, the chapter about the story. I just noticed the the Jew, the Pharisee, with their concern about this miraculous event. They are not actually uh, asking for confirmation of the miraculous nature of Christ. They are just actually doing the evidences, the interview to the blind man to find fault in him. Now, there are actually people who are actually like that, knowing Christ, but not believing Christ, having seen the power of Christ, but are not actually, uh, has no interest of believing in it, but Actually, just to uh, find where they can accuse Christ, and so true to our generation, people have seen how God performed, how God uh, worked in our lives, but actually have not come to the point of committing their lives to God. Uh, then. In this particular event, we can see the Jew uh, having confirmed all their all, all the matters in the event, but are actually convinced of still believing their own opinion about Jesus, that Christ is false, that Christ is just a sinner, and that uh, Christ be sued and be killed. That's actually their assessment to that. Okay, thank you. Let me read uh, verses 24 to 34. Then again, they called the man that was blind and said to him, Give God praise. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know, that I was blind and now I see. Then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How were your eyes opened? And he answered them, I have told you already. Did you not hear? Where would you hear it again? Will you be one of his disciples? Then they reviled him. I mean, he's talking back to the Pharisees. This is really an amazing sequence. Are you that one of his disciples or are you Moses' disciple? We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, 
we know not where he's from. The man answered and said unto them, why? This is a marvelous thing that you know not where he's from, yet he hath opened my eyes. Now we know that God hears not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and do his will, he hears them. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened his eyes of one who was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. And they answered and said to him, Altogether, you are born of sins. Do you teach us? And then they cast him out of the temple. And I, I, I actually really love this back and forth. I mean, the blind man was, was a, obviously a pretty strong personality person because he was willing to you know, stand up to the Pharisees. Most, most general public wouldn't have done this. And he's basically like, I don't know anything about this man that healed me, but I know I was blind and now I am healed. And how could anybody? Not only that, it's like, if, if if a man can if a man can do this miracle, it's from God. If God listens to him, and if that <laughs> it happens, it's got to be from God. Definitely. Pastor uh, Jaime, you got some thoughts? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, um, like uh, Pastor Elijah said, these Pharisees were not actually, uh, or they were driven by their, uh, no, by their unbelief. That is why they are not. Uh, although it is, uh, it is apparent that uh, the the blind uh, was cured from his blindness, yet they are looking. The, the issue here is they they don't want to believe the the Lord Jesus Christ, so it, it's um, no matter what miracle they could they would see, still they would look for faults, for mistakes, for anything that they could uh, they could uh, accuse the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why maybe they want to they want to discredit. They want the this man. To discredit, to tell them uh, that what the Lord Jesus Christ did was not true. So it's a matter of unbelief. A, a person whose heart is closed, no matter what he what he see, what he experience uh, from the Lord, even it's miracle, they will not believe because the heart is already in unbelief. That is my my opinion here. Thank you. No, I think, think that's very true, Jaime. It it, it uh, it's very clear that they they couldn't care less about the miracle. They're just looking for a way to discredit Jesus. Uh, this is the only occurrence that I can think of in the Bible where we have the person that was healed being you know, essentially put on trial by the pharisees um you know we don't know if, obviously it could have happened other times this is only one i know of but it, it's interesting how strong his conviction was i mean he'd been blind all his life and now he sees he's not about to say that it didn't happen uh, yes uh, pastor larry uh, go ahead okay uh, this uh, good uh, answer uh, here in verse 25, because there are people who scrutinize our faith. But uh, the best uh, answer that we can give to them, just like this blind man who got uh, who received sight here in verse 25. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Man. So, to stop their uh, questioning our faith. So that's all. Yeah, amen, Larry. That that's so true. Uh, when we're when we're challenged about our faith, it's like you know, I was 
a horrible person before before Jesus got a hold of me, and now the only good things about me are Jesus. So uh, it's you know I was blind, and now I see because uh, of Jesus. Does anybody else have some thoughts on on this? And also, I wanted to share. Go ahead, go ahead Larry. Whatever Jesus Christ did, there's always a division. Uh, we have noticed here people cause uh, uh, there's uh, a division among them. And that's all. Yeah, I think the, the division is, is very telling because obviously they know he's done something good, yet they're trying to discredit him. And, and some people are not going to take as strong a stance as, as others, just like what we see in today's world. Can I? Go ahead, Elijah. Uh, I just noticed the arguments here. The first argument is the argument of the Jew, the Pharisee, their argument about Jesus. And it, it, the argument about Jesus is that Jesus has done a miracle. Uh, for the Pharisee, it is a violation to the law of Moses that one heals, that one work during the Sabbath. And Jesus is a sinner in their argument that is uh, worthy of punishment. Then another argument here is uh, the argument of the, the blind man. Uh, the, the, the argument of the blind man is that whether these Pharisees are right in their sayings but he actually has said that he he is not a sinner he is not a faulty person that, that is worthy of any punishment or uh, to be persecuted for such an act he is and he act, actually made this statement clear that he is indeed uh, a miraculous man then I notice here uh, that, that he is special, that he is, he is spiritual, that, that this Jesus who he healed him is a, a man from God. The argument that Jesus is not from God, then the argument of the blind man is that this man is doing what a person that has God can do. Then I see the blindness. Number one blindness is the blindness of the Jew, though they can see. It. So this is the irony. They have eyes, but they can uh, not see. But this blind man who ha was born blind, but actually uh, has a very good argument about what happen about him and he, i see this irony that uh, this blind man though he was blind but he knows the the counsel of moses the, the the word of god like what this man has said here if this man were not of god he could do nothing <laughs> he's somewhat this knowledgeable of things that are spiritual. So that's, that is an irony that I have noticed here. The, the Jews are reading the, the Pharisees are reading the law. They are executing the law. They are actually knowledgeable of it. But the, the blind man has a very good argument about what had happened to him. 
Kasi the, the, the lesson I actually have learned from this is that uh, to believe God is really a matter of a choice. Seeing truth, but sometimes people don't want to believe it. And seeing what is right, but actually some people are choosing another thing. Uh, just like what people we have in our churches today, that they have learned the word, they have uh, know the word, they have learned the word, but sometimes are in doubt, so they are not in practice of what we are saying sometimes. That That's all. No, I, I think that's good. I know the, one of the things that, that hit me when I was reading this earlier today was how strong the blind man's conviction was, you know, faced with the rulers of his yes, society. Yes. Uh, and and I, I found that very remarkable, how, how, how strong his convictions were. But I can imagine if it was me and I had been blind since birth and suddenly I see, and I have no idea who the person is that it's helped me. I, I wonder in, in, in a little bit in this story, so, you know, the blind man really wishes to know who this person was that healed him. And and I think that's part of this this that it's like it doesn't matter who he is he must be from God if he can do this thing that no one has ever done before which is heal a, a, someone who was blind okay. since birth right any other thoughts I've seen several other people uh, jump online if you have a good connection please uh, go ahead and uh, share. Limar, are you? Yeah, good morning. I was a bit late. Uh, the power of right. our introduction. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, yeah, it's so nice to start the year 2023 with, uh, with the devotion from the Word of God, especially in John chapter 9. You know, I, I, I did not know the, um, what has transpired before I, I came in. But one thing that I have noticed here, um uh the th the tenacity of the pharisees in the in the moses traditions in moses tradition and the 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 contradiction between the, the ritualism of the pharisees and the conviction of the blind man see um there are many people in our days where uh people would cling to false traditions uh, that they disregard the the truthfulness of the word of god as said in colossians chapter 2 verse number 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies philosophy in vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ so this is a very good context of uh, what i see here the the you know pharisees are very tenacious to the law of moses they are really a, a fan a follower or a fanatic of the, the of the loss of moses but they disregard now the 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 presence of the lord jesus christ where uh there's actually no contradiction between what jesus christ had presented in the moses presentation however they were so literalistic on the coming messiah that should be a king that's why they disregard the lord jesus christ because jesus christ came as an ordinary person um, similarly, when we go to our evangelism, people would would uh, uh, see ordinary people uh, just like they are, and they say we are bringing a new a gospel that is new to them. Though there are already truthfulness in what we are saying, yet they are afraid to embrace the new uh, learnings and information that they have because they cling on to their tradition. This is very true in Bicol region because, uh, you know, the religion here has, um, especially the Catholic religion, had really immersed to the very dividing soul of, of people here and so hard to, you know, uproot their, you know, their ritualism on the religion. But uh, we praise God that there are also people here who are open to the word of God. That's why, uh, similarly, in Christ's time, there is already the, the there is already the the miracle that they see. Yet they believe. Yet they don't still believe. 
uh, the blind man is an is 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 uh, a testimony of the miracle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet they do not they disregard simply disregard. Uh, they know it is true, but they disregard. So uh, this is very true. If in connection here in our present age, people know the truth, but they disregard because they are clinging to some form of uh, religion that they have been born to and brought up and raised up. So we just rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to convert people. We just allow ourselves to be used by God in the most, in the mightiest way he can. So that's all. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay, that's right. <clears throat> Anybody else? No, I, you know, I, I, I look at this and, you know, the blind man has the truth and the Pharisees have the law, right? And, and the, the truth can make you very confident. And I, and I think that's another thing you can kind of take away from this story. I mean, he was a beggar at the gate and now he's confident in front of the rulers of the country because he has the truth. And, and that's a real powerful thing. I think when we go out and evangelize people that have very legalist backgrounds, you know, we're armed with the truth and then it's up to God what happens with it. You know, we, we trust Jesus is going to do the good works. All we have to do is do what we're being asked to do. Let me go ahead and read the, the rest of uh, chapter 9, and then we can have some other thoughts. Starting in verse 35. And Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, you have now seen him. And in fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into the world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what? Are we blind too? And Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. There's a, there's a lot in there. <laughs> um, Elijah, you want to take a, a stab at it first? Yes. That's, that's actually what I have noticed here. The, the blindness of the Pharisee, though they are able to see things uh, with their eyes, but are actually are blind of a truth. Then this uh, blind man, though they, he is but not able to see uh, things in his, from his birth to the point of his age that day he is not able to see the truth but uh, he actually has a inner man that is always willing to believe what happened to him when he encountered this miraculous man Jesus and so we I actually am um, intrigued with the the attitude of the Jew that the Pharisee I mean that they are more convinced of uh, their their hypothesis that Jesus is sinner they are more convinced of the scripture of the word of the law rather than the giver of the law I have seen also the in the conviction of the Pharisee that uh, it is but uh, right to remain in their traditions, their rituals that just that was said by Pastor Limar, uh, and their and to remain in their religion rather than to believe the event, the miraculous event, and the uh, maker of that miraculous event. 
uh, people are open uh, we can see people open uh, in contemplation of science what to believe science or the uh, the, the scripture uh, and to legalists we have legalists we have uh, religious we have uh, many groups today that are truth seekers for us as christians as believer of god we ought to remain believing the scriptures whatever the bible says about jesus and based on my experience in many prayers in in many times and every time we look around us uh, we should not uh, fight this conviction of truth indeed there is a god M moses did not just give the scriptures the laws moses we have to consider that moses introduced the living god who give the scriptures to follow then the, the we can say that Jew missed to recognize Christ but has understood the law they have accepted the law but they have not accepted the Lord this is danger today we are sometimes believing the, the law but are not following the Lord uh, I have also remember what pastor jaime actually had said when we are in the conference that there is just but a very thin boundary with uh knowing uh, the, the will of the lord and the will of man <laughs> and so, so i pray that we all come to the point of uh recognizing the will of god not partially but wholly uh, what the Bible says about Christ, we ought to uh, believe it wholly and also whatever the scripture says that we should do, we do it. We recognize the giver of the law, uh, the law and the giver of the law. This is the failure of the Pharisees. They just consider the law but not the giver of the law. Uh, that, that's very true. Uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting though because it's like the pharisees the pharisees have have memorized the scripture they study the scripture yet they miss christ because if, yes. if, if you if you go through jesus words it's like he said the scriptures talks about me and they totally miss him yes and he even quotes the scriptures to them that that talks about him and, and they miss him it's, it's it's one of those you can you can it's 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 i think it's it's part of that that passage here that it says you were if you were blind you will not be guilty of sin but you claim that you see they, they claim that they know god but they don't pastor caviar go ahead yeah um the Pharisees are too proud that they are the followers of moses the the script they, we know that the the Pharisees and the scribes are the ones who really uh, devoted to study and to follow the scriptures. They put it into their mind, not on their heart. That's why they fail to understand that all the scriptures or the law of Moses is pointing out to Jesus Christ. That's, the, that's why they are blinded. They do not see because um, uh, they fail to understand that the word of God is pointing out all to Jesus. So that's why they are blind actually. Um, so um, we understand also that the Jews require signs. That's why they feel to reconsider that what Jesus did, what miracle that Jesus did is actually for them to reconsider that he came from God. So, but then because they were blind, uh, they are close minded because they claim that they know everything. No one could teach them. That's what they 
miss to understand for the this parisis yeah very good anyone else may may i uh, may no, no, i say me. something uh the subject here is blindness so while i am looking at the verses and listening to uh to your to many uh sharing i have made a i wrote down some differences of blindness here first the physical blindness of the man before the lord met him so people there are people who are physically blind uh, the, the later part is now that you have said you see your sin remain it in you okay so there is physical blindness there is also blindness of the mind here that is they tend to use reasoning the parents knew and they could re very well testify that the blind man is was their son but because of reasoning that they would be cast out from the synagogue then they could not stand for the truth that is social blindness that is blindness of the mind even the spectators they could testify that the man that was blind and now could see but they could not uh, stand as a witness to the to the Pharisees that indeed this man is physically blind and now he could see but because of reasoning the blindness of the mind they don't know where to stand although they knew, knew the truth then they are still uh, blinded in their minds then the third blindness i saw here is the blindness of the heart that is the pride of the pharisees there is a passage in the bible that they they the gospel was hid to them because of the blindness of the heart and that is why even the pharisees knew that that uh, sister judith uh, uh made it clear that they knew the scriptures but they do, they couldn't see jesus christ in the scriptures because of the pride uh, and that is true we tend to knew th this is also a, a lesson to us even to us as pastors maybe we knew very well the doctrine maybe we could preach the doctrine but we do not really knew who jesus is maybe we could preach the jesus of the bible but not the jesus in our lives so it's not just uh, knowing the scriptures it must be knowing the lord jesus christ so it is a blindness of the heart there is also a blindness in the spirit here why uh, the, uh, in support to those uh, pharisees who, who, who uh, memorize the scriptures but their spirit is blinded to know the truth and the third and the last one the blindness of the soul after the man was cast out by the pharisees the lord jesus christ found him in the temple and so uh the lord compr uh, confronted him and he, he said the, do you want to believe him the one that made you see and he said yes i want so the, the lord said it is i then the 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 man said i believe and that is the blindness of the soul longing to see the lord jesus christ so maybe there are a lot of blindness here thank you so much very good honey anyone else we're coming up on about 8 20 so we'll probably want to try to wrap up the the bible study if, if someone else has some final thoughts and just go ahead and unmute your microphone yeah i would like to to um uh, thank pastor jaime for bringing that out uh you know it's already an outline for preaching <laughs> thank you pastor jaime however i also have mentioned here uh the ritualism of the pharisees and uh you know the the fanaticism of some people and also the fear of the parents towards uh being uh secluded from the society 
and uh, the 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 you know the the strong conviction of the blind man uh, that though there will be you know he already knew that there will be he will be cast out out from the synagogue but he made a strong stand so these are the kinds of people that we also see in the midst today in our in our congregation today that there are people who really would like to stand for their conviction whatever happens whoever would you know would uh, would um would cast them away they will stand for their convictions and there are also people uh christians who knew that they are christians but they are afraid to you know publicize their their conviction that they are christians they 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 just simply a disciple who are following christ um in a far uh far away place uh they are secret disciples they like they look like Nicodemus who just come to Jesus by night. They just want blessings, but they don't want responsibilities. And there are also people who are really, um, though they know the truth, but they really simply disregard it for pride, as was mentioned by Pastor Jaime. But also, I could see here how the Holy Spirit works. You know, people may be very uh very highly educated but if the holy spirit does not reside in their lives they could really not understand the the simplest uh, message of the word of god you know it takes the holy spirit to give us the the understanding uh for for us to understand what the bible says you know it's, it's very it's very urgent for us you know relationship with christ is is a uh, is a primary um primary message that we we need to to have as people of god we cannot understand the deepest thoughts of the of the word of god without the holy spirit who gives us the discernment discernment is so is so you know it's only the holy spirit that we give us the sermon does not only give us the wisdom to understand the difference between right and wrong but you know the difference between the right and almost right uh, that is the crucial thing in in understanding the word of god and also i find a verse in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 which says for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us who are saved it is the power of christ to us christians the preaching of the cross is really a power but to unbelievers it's just a foolishness. They would simply disregard it. And also the context of that verse in 1 Corinthians that there are many foolish things. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I see there the irony in the verse that we have just read that um, um, that they might, verse 39, that they might see uh, which see not and that those who see would be blind. You know, it's just how how I would understand this. It's it's so so in opposition, direct contrast that that the truthfulness of God about what the message of Christ is. People can see the truthfulness of Christ, but there are people who will not see because of the truth, who will be blinded by the truth. So uh, I am still contemplating how how to come across with this with these two opposing views that jesus christ said that uh those for those who are for some people they can see what i can what i am saying but for 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 other people uh they will be they will they will be blinded by what i'm doing so uh this is also the thing that i want to give to the rest of us how are we going to reconcile this position thank you can i <laughs> Go ahead, Elijah. Go ahead, I just Elijah. noticed the two convictions. The, convic the conviction of the Jew and the conviction of the blind. In this last part, we saw that they have experienced the same event. They have seen the miraculous event. Seeing it and hearing it, studying it, both happened to the blind and to the Pharisee. But the Jew is having this conviction 
they have seen the truth, they have understand the event, and have scrutinized it and found out to be that it is a miracle. But in their minds, they have this decision where they are so convicted of that Christ is worthy of persecution. But the conviction of the blind man, but now see, able to see, he, he has this experience of Christ. He know this is a miracle. And he has this devotion that Christ is worthy of my devotion. And that is what I have seen this in this story. The two convictions, the conviction of the Pharisee and the conviction of the blind man. Now, it's just like us. We do not know the truth before. And when the gospel, when the, the scripture was revealed and opened to us, we already encountered the real Lord, not just the law, but the Lord. And so we have this decision and are fully convinced of or convicted of. When we saw the Bible, when we saw the Bible, when we opened the Bible, we see not just the law, we saw the Lord. And we have this decision that the Lord of the scripture who gave the law is worthy of my devotion. That's all. Go ahead, Judy. Um, I think what comes down to uh, at the end is uh, the free will of man. Because it's like, I, I noticed it before, it's like, how can, you know, some t all these atheist people that would say, like, there's no God. But then it's like, see, there's a really, really smart people that don't see it, that God is God. But there's also really, really smart people that would see that there is God. And if, if they look at the same literature, they look at the Bible, one would come up with like, that's all rubbish. Not, that's all rubbish. And the other side of it would say, yeah, that, that's, that's really true. And then there's also like not so smart people that would be the same thing. They would be like, some would say like, yeah, that's, that's really like true. And the other side would be like, no, it's not true. So it's like, it actually it comes down to if you want to know god you will you will get to know him but if you don't no matter what kind of miracle you see you will never get convinced because you already made up your mind uh there, you would just come up come up with some kind of excuses whatever excuses that you can find remember when jesus when when the story of lazarus and the rich man rich man that, that both died the rich man said, "Send Lazarus, send Lazarus back to Earth, so they can, so so we can convince my brothers that there is really like a hell and and and, and a paradise." But then Abraham said, "Even if the the dead, you know, comes alive, they they, they have Moses and they have they have Moses and they have the law, the prophets." If they even if they didn't believe it, it's said even if somebody would come from the dead, they will not believe it. I mean, they've seen the Lazarus, the brother of Mary and 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 Martha came, you know, alive and he resurrected them. They still don't want to believe on him. They want to kill them both. So it's it, it doesn't matter. So if you made up your mind, you you will not be able to change it, and God respects that, you know. He he, res he would respect our choices. You don't want to know him, then that's what you want. And those people that want to know him, and he will reveal himself to them. Yeah, I think uh, you know it's what you struggle with in the Philippines. A lot of is there's a lot of people that have knowledge about God, but don't really know who God is. And knowledge and knowing are are not the same thing. Uh, knowing is having a relationship, actually personally knowing. The impact that God has on your life. Other is just this legal, uh, ritual version of, of I, I know about God. And I think all we can do is keep presenting the truth of the Bible and, 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 and pray that the Holy Spirit soften their will so that they're open to that next step, which is a relationship instead of just. And knowledge. only God can do that. Only God we, can do we that. can't convince them. Amen. We're just Amen. We're just here to present. Our job is to present.
So actually, it, it's really good because it's going to remove that that uh, pressure with you guys, especially the pastor, that I have to convince this that this is the truth. And if you don't think of that, and then it's like, okay, I just need to do my job, present the gospel, and God is the one that's going to do his miracle, whether they convince him or not. Um, uh, any other thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, I just want to uh, thank Ma'am uh, Joy. Uh, me first, then Willie. Go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, Sister Joy uh, is very true. We should not, we should not uh, convince people. No matter how we try, we could not convince them. It is only the Holy Spirit could do this. Yes, that is very true, Ma'am Joy. Thank you. Uh, can I add something? Willie? Uh, can I add something? Thank you very much for the sharing time. What I am seeing in the passage, the blindness is dominant among men. Same mm -hmm. present uh, situation. Uh, we were uh, blind once before, but thank the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ opened our minds. God is very gracious and merciful. That's why we know better <laughs> by this time, the Lord Jesus Christ. So since this blindness is working uh, anywhere in every nation, so our prayer should be that the Lord may open the minds of those uh, people whom we are sharing the gospel. And we know because uh, that's why uh, we know that there is blind dis blindness because of the sinning nature we acquired from Adam. So, so the very best thing to do is to pray to the Lord whenever we are sharing the gospel that the Lord uh, may do something like the lame man. He opened the mind of the lame man, but the Pharisees are still. Uh, Close. So it's depend upon the Lord whom He will uh, open their minds, <laughs> whom He will touch the hearts. So that's only what what I could say. That the the blindness is dominant everywhere. We're needing the mighty working of our Lord. So that's all. Amen. Anyone else before we close our Bible study? Right. Uh, Willie, would you like to close us with a prayer? And then I'll do a little business meeting. Okay, let's pray. Our wonderful God in heaven, the very gracious one and merciful one, we thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible for thee. Though men are blind, but once you open their minds and touch their hearts, they were uh, they will uh, surely recognize the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, for having this kind of sharing time. It contributed many insights to every one of us. As your servants, we are helping us to widen, to broaden our minds regarding these spiritual matters. We thank you also, Lord, for this uh, punla. This is a blessing for us through the leadership of uh, Brother Kip and his staff. Thank you, Lord. And we know that we will do more things in the future in relation to this uh, punla that we are uh, affiliated, affiliated to. May you bless every programs they have, may you bless every ministry that you have entrusted, not only to the Punla, but also to the pastors who are a uh, member of this uh, organization. So we thank you, Lord, because we are thanking you and praying for you. In uh, the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you very much for the for the sharing. It, it was, it, it's always 
always fun. I'm so glad we started doing this uh, last year. Well, thank Amen. you, everyone. And, uh, thank you. We'll thank you. See you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.